Hey there, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to customize your fasting window to get the most benefits, the most mileage out of compressing your feeding window because it's so personalized. You know, for me, for example, when I'm exercising all the time, I can only fast for like 12 hours a day and still get benefits. But if I'm not exercising, I have to compress that window down more and maybe even go 18, 20 hours a day to, to get the same benefits. And it's so variable. Just because one guru or expert or author or scientist says, 16 eights, the, the thing, you should do that. It doesn't mean that that's good for you. I mean, I think that's probably a good place for most people, but it could be more or less for you depending upon you know, how much lean muscle mass you have. Uh, what does your health history look like? How long have you been eating this way? A healthy, real food style diet. You know, um, what's your sleep like? What's your stress like? How much fat do you have to lose? There's all of that. And so I want to share with you how to test your breath acetone levels to try to get a little bit more insight into when your body might make the metabolic switch. The switch away from utilizing glucose as a primary fuel to making ketones, which we're gonna talk about from your liver and utilizing fat for fuel. So that's where we're going. I'm very grateful that you are here. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. It's Mike Mutzel. I'm grateful, uh, again, as I just said, that you're here. If you enjoy this content at any time, please hit that like button. And links and articles and things that we're gonna talk about, like this pilot study here. Breath acetone is a biomarker for lipid oxidation and early ketone detection. So that's kind of where we're going. But let me just give you like the, the big picture overview. Okay, when your body starts to utilize fats for fuel and you, your liver starts to make ketones, what's going to happen is your breath acetone will start to rise. We're gonna get into the physiology, but if you watch nothing else, just know this. When that starts to rise, and on the My Biosense, I like to look for units starting to creep up around five into the 510 range. That tells me, and after doing you know serial glucose and blood ketone testing uh, with the My Biosense unit, that tells me that, hey, my, my body is pivoting to burning fat for fuel. That's helpful information because that gives me feedback into, okay, well, what do I need to do in my lifestyle? Do I need to walk in the morning to, to get there faster? Do I need to compress my feeding window more? Do I need to go to bed earlier? Do I need to not have you know, the, that cookie, right? Or that piece of chocolate or whatever. So it gives you biofeedback and information. Now, this is really interesting, particularly for me and any of you who have been infected with the coronavirus, I've noticed that it's harder for me to get into ketosis now. I don't know why or what's going on. It's probably some background inflammation as a result of having that infection, even though it was really mild for me in particular, but yeah, we'll talk about more of that in another video, but but I've noticed that I gotta fast more. I gotta really, because you know ketones have a lot of health benefits and, and mitochondrial benefits, and so I'm trying to harness the benefits and the anti-inflammatory properties of that way of living to, to make sure that I don't have any long-term effects of this or this long haul stuff. So anyway, that's why I'm interested in this, but I know you're interested in fat loss, so let's dive into what happens when you have a low calorie diet, a low carb diet, when you exercise or when you start to fast, okay? So what happens is these are your fat cells right here. Now, a lot of us have more of these fat cells and they're, they're filled up more than we would like them to be filled up. And that's why we're watching videos like this, right? Again, compress our fitting window, compress our calories, compress our carbs, or we start exercising, the hormones flip. We have low insulin, we have low glucose, we have low blood energy, glucagon increases, and that causes our fat cells to sort of unleash, unleash the stored fat. And so what we have then is increased circulation of free fatty acids. Now, if you've been exercising for a long period in your life and you're an athlete, you know, your muscles are utilizing the, the free fatty acids. The, the challenge here is your brain is not really good at taking the free fats from your fat tissue or your diet. We just put diet here. Um, <clears throat> or diet, your brain's not really good at directly utilizing that. And that's where ketones come in because what happens here is your liver makes first, I mean, there's a series of steps, but we're just simplifying here, beta hydroxybutyrate. And then beta hydroxybutyrate is in equilibrium with acetoacetate. Now, you've probably heard of acetoacetate, but unfortunately you can't measure this unless you do something in a research study. Now, um, what's going on here is the liver, these are in equilibrium, they're about 50-50 concentration, uh, based upon some conversations I've had, um, you know, at seminars and things with Stephen Finney, who's been doing this work for a long time, and Jeff Volick. You know, the muscles, per them, I don't have any data here, 
Um, the muscles tend to utilize acetoacetate more and the brain is utilizing the beta hydroxybutyrate. So this is what you're measuring in the blood. I definitely recommend blood beta hydroxybutyrate measuring. I use the Keto Mojo, I use the Keto Coach, I have both of those. What's nice about the Keto Coach is it has um, the sealed strips. They were the, one of the first companies to have the sealed strips so there's no moisture, so you know you're getting a really accurate reading. So I'll put that link below, really, really good company. Keto Mojo too has a great app as well. They do both the ketone, um, blood ketone, BHB, and also glucose in that, in that unit. So that's a pretty cool unit. So both are great. I like having one of each because then I prick my finger once, I use the same blood, for, for both, measuring glucose and ketones at the same time instead of pricking myself twice. That's just what I've, I've learned to do that over the years. That's what I do. Now, let's get into acetones. You have, again, liver starts to crank out uh, ketones because you can't have all this fat circulating everywhere. Beta hydroxybutyrate is kind of like a controlled release fat and it's able to go into your brain. So here's your brain, all right? Now, here's where things get interesting with the acetone. Um, my marker, again, it's uh, acting up on me, but we'll just, you can see that hopefully. So acetone is going to come out in the urine or the breath. And so, you know, for many of you who have been doing the ketogenic diet for a long time, or you just, you've Googled some stuff, you, you might have sort, some sort of urine strips. Okay. So that's like a good, you know, first thing to like kind of do maybe. Uh, but the challenge is if you're dehydrated and the longer that you've been doing this, you know, those become less and less accurate over time, whereas the breath becomes more and more accurate because it's more stable uh, with the spontaneous. So acetoacetate spontaneously can combust into acetone and uh, that's going to come out in your sweat. That's why you might smell a little sweet. That's why your breath might ha you might have ketones. I remember, you know, I was working in a gym. This was in 2001 uh, and 2002. And a lot of bodybuilders back then, and still now, uh, were doing the ketogenic diet, and I, I could tell the ones because I could smell their ketones, and so they would they would just you know crank down their carbs, crank up their fat and protein, and just lift like, and they would get so shredded. And I ended up trying. I I didn't think I didn't know that it was keto, but we were just doing a low carb you know kind of thing, and people would notice like, hey, your breath kind of smells a little funny, man. Like, what's going on with that? So you just gotta pay attention to that. That is the acetone, but. The cool thing about acetone, thanks to this new pilot study and some other uh, anecdotal reports and so forth, is we know that this correlates with fat oxidation and ketones as well. So let's kind of talk about that and talk about how to use acetone as a biomarker to help to custom tailor your feeding fasting window. Uh, because here's what's, it, there's no real superiority or inferior, or like it's not like testing blood ketones is bad like blood BHB, and it's not like testing acetone is better. The, the advantage to the acetone is you can do repeated measurements throughout the day. They're non-invasive. You don't have to prick your finger all the time. So, you know, as we're talking here, I could maybe do uh, a breath acetone measurement just to sort of see kind of where I'm at. Now, when I exercise a lot, when I eat low carb, when I compress my feeding window, or when I take berberine, that's been super interesting. Berberine uh, is very ketogenic. It's super under-recognized. What I found is on the MyBioSense, the units go from zero to 25. When I'm between the five and the 10, say I fast for 12 hours or 16 hours or whatever, and I start to get into that five to 10 range, that's when I know I've kind of made this metabolic switch. When my body is primarily then utilizing free fatty acids and ketones for fuel. So again, this is kind of the, the part in the video where you might want to just write this down or keep in mind. You can use breath acetone as the, the proxy, the way to figure out, okay, well, how long should I be fasting? Is it for 12 hours? Like if you make this pivot at 12 hours, then good for you, that's amazing. Let's pause and look at this and just kind of maybe see where I'm at. So you hit the green button, you let it do its thing, it calibrates and then I blow into it. You don't have to, <laughs> just, you just kind of blow into it. It does some sampling. There's some really cool, by the way, the FDA has looked at this for as a medical device. It's a class one medical device, which is different than a lot of the other devices out there. So I'm at a six. Now I have had some food, okay? As I film this, it's a little late, it's about six o'clock here, but I have had some food. So um, I'm in mild ketosis. Now, 
where does the acetone correlate with BHB? Well, what this paper, which was really interesting, there was 11 subjects. They found that the acetone doesn't correlate linearly with BHB. It's more of a sort of exponential. So this would be linear. This would be like one to one. If this was acetone and this was BHB right here, for example, one to one, it, it was more of a relationship sort of like that. In this pilot study, what they also looked at is respiratory quotient. So a higher respiratory quotient as it, get, as it gets closer to one, you know, that would be more suggestive of carbohydrate oxidation. A respiratory quotient closer to like 0.73, I think, or 0.75 is more reflective of fat oxidation. So this has to do with carbon dioxide uh, in, in the breath and so forth. So. Uh, interestingly, acetone, again, does correlate with uh, fat oxidation via respiratory quotient. So again, just to kind of summarize, right? What we're trying to figure out is customizing the amount of energy that we need on a given day, the amount of exercise that we need in our feeding fasting window, and the amount of carbs that we're having to figure out if we're doing stuff right. And, and you know, there's, there's online calculators, macro calculators, all of that which are largely theoretical based upon body weight and height and some of these different things and age and all of that. But it's nice to have tools and feedback tools because your metabolism changes all the time. You know, for example, in the summer, uh, my levels might be totally different than in the winter. After you know, getting like the coronavirus, I found that I have to really sort of compress my feeding window more than I normally would to achieve the same level of ketosis. You know, why is that? Who knows? I'm just trying to figure these things out over time, but it's sort of interesting. So um, th I think this is a really cool tool because you can do serial measurements throughout the day and you don't have to constantly prick your finger. Now, I still recommend testing blood ketones. I think it's a great, great thing to do. Um, we'll get into more videos on that. But uh, I think that's it for now, friends. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, it's early here in the year, in, in 2021, and, and we can do a lot more videos on some of these different topics. But uh, I would definitely recommend reading this paper. I'll put links below. The My Biosense unit, there is a little coupon code below, and they're not paying me to make this video or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of share with you a little bit more about this device because I think it's a really cool device. It's really reliable and it's really consistent. And so that's what I found. If you, if you fast all the time, you start to notice your acetone is, just cre is creeping up. But if you're eating carbs and drinking wine and all that, I admit I did a little of that over the holidays, I would wake up and my, I'm at zero because I'm not making any acetones. I'm not making ketones because I don't have a lot of free fatty acids floating around as higher glucose, okay? So um, I found that this device is really consistent and it's a pretty cool tool. So as always, thanks so much for tuning all the way in. Any comments, questions, let me know. Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and we'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.